What's up my friends, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about some interesting facts about Transformer. I'm Sujay Das from HCDB Education. So let's get started. A single phase voltage transformer basically consists of two electrical coils of wire. One called the primary winding and the another called the secondary winding. For this tutorial we will define the primary side of the transformer as the side that usually takes power and the secondary as the side that usually delivers the power. In a single phase voltage transformer the primary is the usual the side with the higher voltage. These two coils are not in electrical conduct with each other but instead they wrap together around a common closed magnetic iron circuit called as a core. The soft iron core is not a solid but made up of individual laminations connected together to help reduce the core's losses. The two coil windings are electrically isolated from each other but are magnetically linked through the common core allowing electrical power to transfer from the one coil to the other. When an electronic current passes through the primary winding, a magnetic field is developed in which includes a voltage transfer to the secondary windings. As you can see, Vp is the primary voltage, Vs is the secondary voltage, Np is the number of primary windings, Ns is the number of secondary windings and Phi is the flux linkage. Okay, now I will not discuss anything theoretically, it's time to do some practical work. So, let's go. I set my multimeter to measure the resistance mode. First I measured the resistance of primary windings and it shows about 1.98 kilo ohm. Now I measure the resistance of the secondary windings and it shows 0 0.03 kilo ohms, that means 30 ohms. Now I take another 18 volt transformer. It has a primary windings of 1.15 kilo ohms resistance and secondary windings of 0.014 kilo ohms resistance. But what happens when I have a giant transformer and I don't know anything about it? You can see there are so many wires, I even don't know what are the input pins and what are the output. I set my multimeter to diode testing or beeping mode and connect the white and black wire to it and it's beeping. I also check the other pair of the connector and on the black and the white wire I found the beeping. It simply means they are connected together. Now I set my multimeter to registrator testing mode and I connect the pins of multimeter to the upper side of the wires and it shows 9.7 ohms. Now I built a series circuit to test my transformer as I don't know the connection. The only advantage of series circuit is to prevent from the short circuit. I hooked up the crocodile connector to the transformer to see the bulb is glowing or not. If the bulb turns on, it simply means there is any short circuit. If the bulb doesn't light up, it simply means everything is good. Now I set the dial of my multimeter to AC voltage reading and connect the pins to the transformer. When I switched on the power supply and the meter shows a voltage reading of 12.7 volt AC. Now it's time to utilize the power. I built a 0 to 30 volt stabilized power supply circuit with a volt and current controlling system with TL081 IC and that I will show you in my next video. I use a volt and amp meter to measure the output current and voltage. You can buy this kit from Amazon, the link is given in the description. A 12 volt DC motor for testing. I set all the component and connect all the connectors according to the circuit. I use two potentiometer to adjust the output voltage and current. I attach a piece of paper to the motor to show its rotation speed. I used a DC 9 volt battery to power up the volt and ammeter. 
After connecting all the components to the circuit, I connect the main power source of the circuit to the secondary windings of the transformer. Now I switched on the main power supply. As you can see, motor is now rotating. That means motor is now on. I change the volt and current level using the potentiometer and let's see what happened. Now I test it with 6 volt bulb. I increase the volt and as you can see the bulb is glowing higher than before. It can highly consume up to 11 volt and 0.34 amps. And apart from that when I increase the volt it stop lighting. I think it's now dead. Ah as you can see the glass is back. Just because it cannot consume that much of energy that I applied. Now I take a 10 ohms quarter watt carbon resistor and connect it to the output power source of the circuit. Now I switch on the power supply. As you can see it's now burning. Because I give 9 volt and 0.55 amp or 9.45 wattage energy to it. I also do an experiment with 3.3 ohms half watt resistor. I connect the pins to my power supply. As you can see it takes a little bit time to burn just because it's a half watt registrator. If you like our video don't forget to like share and subscribe stay creative and I will see you next time.